we are going to discuss about persistent volumes persistent volumes are a kind of storage provisioning method in the kubernetes cluster as the name says whenever a mission critical pod requires to store their data outside the pod we do map the persistent volumes with the respective pods again a persistent volume cannot be directly mapped to a pod we have to relay an another kubernetes object called persistent volume claim that object will discuss in the very next video so let's move on to the persistent volumes in kubernetes cluster there are multiple solutions available for persistent volumes from our legacy storage uh, storage system or our ssd disk or aws cloud azure cloud google cloud or even nfs uh, server solutions can be used as persistent volumes the volume will present to the worker node or worker nodes if if it is a deployment and there are multiple replicas are span across multiple worker nodes in that case we have to present the persistent volumes to the multiple nodes so once or as soon as we present the persistent volumes we have to create the persistent volume claims so that this particular persistent volume claim that object can bind with the persistent volume and this particular persistent volume claim will connect to the or we will mention this parameter or we will inject this parameter in the pod creation that declaration form subsequently whenever we call it using kubectl create command when we create the pod this particular persistent volume claim will be mapped again that particular file system will be mapped under or the particular file system will be mapped with the persistent volume claim so whenever a user writes the data first it will write in the persistent volume claim then it will it will move on to the the data will move on to the persistent volume claim then it will write to the underlying storage let you let uh, let me re, uh, remind you one thing there would not be multiple read or write transactions in each objects this would be the way the io operations will be happening there are any persistent volume present or persistent volume claim is present nothing is there right it's it's just a clean and neat and cluster first thing we have to create a persistent volume for that let me create a declaration form just keep in mind that using imperative method we cannot create a persistent volume we have to use the declarative way because predominantly we have to mention lot of parameters that parameters will never ever support the imperative method that's the reason we are laying on the declarative method so as the name says let me give any name dot yaml again the api version will be as v1 the cube api version is v1 and what kind of object are we going to create we are going to create persistent volume kind as persistent volume the data meta data that is again the property of this particular kubernetes object or the persistent volume so the name is pv hyphen nginx i'm going to create a persistent volume or for or pv storage i'm creating that way because it will be somehow good right i will label it because i just want to filter it easily for binding so i will do one thing type is 
type as SSD. I have an SSD. Assume that I have a an SSD uh, storage. Uh, this particular LAN is coming from an SSD storage. Anyway, in this case, we have, we would be discuss uh, discussing post path. I will let you know that. Again, move on to the next part of spec specifications. It's as simple as we are giving persistent volume right so that requires a capacity capacity i would uh, have another parameter called storage storage we can give assume that 4 gb all right we have given 4 gb capacity next parameter is access modes that's an array again so we have multiple modes so I will give read write once back to the slide again assume that we have a deployment and this deployment is having five replicas so the five replicas in the sense it will be span across the multiple worker nodes so what will happen is if we have a slash data file system mapped with the persistent volume in that case one pod will be mapped here and the other pod also should be uh, mapped here in that case assume that if we have present this LAN to only worker node 2 this pod which which is running on the worker node will lose the data in that case we will present the LAN to both worker node 1 and worker node 2 and we will create read write many that means multiple nodes at a time this particular persistent volume can perform the read write operations and the other thing is read only and read only and write many so one node will have a uh, read permission and multiple nodes will have write permission and the other is read write one so that means one node will have whatever the particular node we will be mapping it that particular node only have the read write permission remaining nodes will not be having the permission so we have to set this attributes according to our requirement or the customer demand so just remember these three parameters before we mention the attributes in our case we have a two node uh, kubernetes cluster there is no point of uh, mentioning this read write many again in our aws uh, or google cloud class we will map this with uh, a different advanced settings once we are thorough with the basics next is persistent volume reclaim policy Let us first we will give delete okay i will let you know why i have given this in the next to next video this storage class name again i will give you a brief here persistent volume reclaim policy in the sense as i told you that we will create a persistent volume then the persistent volume will be mapped with persistent volume claim so what will happen is then this particular volume claim will update to the uh, to any of the pods in this case we will have a pod that pod will write the data to the persistent volume claim and then it will uh, that data will 
come into the persistent volume then it will come to the underlying hardware device similar way assume that we have removed or deleted the pod we don't want that particular pod anymore and we have deleted the persistent volume claim as well since we don't want the pod anymore in that case if we select delete option for persistent volume reclam reclamation automatically the persistent volume will be deleted from the system similarly we have an another option called retain retain in the sense if we delete the pod as well as the persistent volume claim the persistent volume as well as the data put into the storage remains as it is so that either the same similar kind of persistent volume and a similar kind of pod is created so that we can retrieve the data or we can reuse the data so nothing will happen with the data and the last one is recycle in the recycle it is as simple as just like a scrubbing a file system assume that you have a d drive in your personal laptop you your use uh, usage or uh, your project is over you will just like that wipe the data inside the d drive that is what is called a recycle so the data will be just like that wiped out so this would be ready to allocate to any other persistent volume claim or the pod whatever it is now i will show you that in the next uh, upcoming videos so we don't want to be a very lengthy and complex scenario let's understand the basics and we will move on to that all right storage class what does mean by storage class assume that <coughs> we have around four types of storages in our infrastructure the first storage is legacy one that is having that uh, very slow speed hard disks installed and you have a latest advanced technology storage in your uh, uh, infrastructure that uses the ssd disk that is fastest third is the cloud aws eps block or azure disk or google cloud google persistent disk so you you can define you can categorize these three things <coughs> like a slow fast medium in that way so what will happen is for example you are you have a database uh, pod would be running on a worker node and if you plan to allocate the store storage to a database pod in that case you may record faster fastest storage that case you can use uh, aws disk or uh, the latest in that type ssd uh, the latest uh, emc ssd disk storage devices so uh, how will it come to know because we can uh, we can allocate a bunch of lands and we can present a bunch of lands to the worker node and from the worker node we will create a small chunks of storages that is called persistent volume so each persistent volume we will label it like in a systematic manner like a type is ssd then hard disk drive like that way once once scenario we will label it fast to slow that way so what will happen is when you create the persistent volume claim there also you will define the storage class like the fast slow medium so the it will create a, a binding criteria so the appropriate objects will bind together and form a proper channel we will see that in the next uh, in the upcoming sessions so here i will mention that slow just keep in mind that next uh, next point is guys host path 
first path is asymptotic so in our uh, the first uh, section in the static uh, provisioning segment we have defined right we have to define a storage device so in this case since we do not have any other option now we will uh, plan to preserve the data under slash dmp data directory if you have an aws uh, lan you can very well install the aws plugin and mention that aws cps block device id so that uh, the underlying storage will be treated as aws or similar way you can define the google persistent disk or azure as i told we will discuss that in the advanced sessions here again we have to mention path equal to slash apt uh, sorry slash tmp slash data now remember that we should never ever do this exercise for a production server because slash tmp will uh, may get wiped out at any time and uh, even the worker node also will get wiped out at any time so that if the data is pretty much critical always make sure you would be saving the data or you would be provisioning the lands for creating the persistent volume from an external source that is aws cloud or azure or any other external storage media now we have defined the host path past point here we mentioned the api version kind as persistent volume metadata as name is pv storage labels type we have mentioned here spec here in the persistent volume remember we our predominant concern is capacity and storage that is 4 gigabyte and access modes read write once persistent volume reclaim policy is delete storage class slow post path we have mentioned it perfectly all right now it's the right time to create the same so it is as simple as keep ctl create minus f pv dot yaml so we have created a persistent volume called pv hyphen storage so cube ctl catch pv perfect we have created and look at the attributes its capacity is 4 gb access modes read write once the claim policy is delete status is available remember guys i am just stressing this point status point available we have some dealings later with this parameter storage class is slow everything it's it's good now so give ctl describe describe pv pv hyphen storage look at this now it is pretty much more information we have received right it is saving the data at slash tmpt da events none nothing so in this case the host path is as simple as wherever the pod would be running in that particular pod we should have a slash tmp slash data directory so that it will preserve the data at that particular mount point if you have an aws disk it would be mapping at that point predominantly the labels we will use for selecting while creating the uh, persistent volume claim that will cover in the next video so that's it the data or the video session regarding the persistent volume again we have couple more uh, transactions with this that we will cover in the next to next video because the next video we will be focusing exclusively for creating persistent volume claim and its features that video we will be predominantly exploring this reclamation policy and access modes in a detailed manner so that guys you will